Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana, and I am live on a Tuesday morning. And today is a cloudy, overcast day. And uh, it was a little cold this morning. Not too cold, but it's it's uh, getting towards the winter. Not winter yet, but um, just colder weather in, in general. So I'm a little bit... Uh, more warmly dressed today and today is the day when we take a card out of the catalog or one of the Stampin' Up! catalogs and we give it a makeover and this is a great exercise for everyone to do even people who have been stamping for a long time like me because it gets us out of our comfort zone we tend to do cards the same way over and over again because that is easy for us but if we look at someone else's style and we try and change the layers up and we try something different it's really good for our brain to do that and uh, so I really like creating cards this way and I think it's a great thing for beginners and it's a great thing for advanced people and we have a Facebook group for that uh, it's called Casing Tuesday and uh, you'll find the link in the description of my video below and if you click over onto um, the link and ask to join um, uh, you will we uh, approve new members every week and we're up to 3100 members so that's awesome and every week we have people that join with us and copy the same card that we're we're doing now by copy I don't mean you have to copy the card exactly you take the layers of the card and you switch them out and make them your own you might need to make some layers bigger for your card some layers smaller um, but the card that we choose is a blueprint for you to use that week and then we have a post that we start or a thread and everyone posts underneath that thread so when you go back and look you can see oh there's the original card and here are all the different variations that people have come up with so it's kind of fun and uh, we have a great community over there and good morning to everyone who's joining me thank you everyone for joining me I will talk with you afterwards so we can get to the card at hand so let's take a look at um, the card that is today's card. It is this card and it's almost at the back of the catalog and sorry I'm a little, it's a little blurry. Um, usually we have images right out of the catalog that we can use that Stampin' Up! provides us. But um, this one wasn't one of those images so we actually took it as a screenshot from uh, the catalog so it's not quite as clear as it might normally be but it's a really cute card nonetheless and I like the layers on this card I think uh, you, it's very fun to build a card around those layers so if you break down the layers oops there we go this is what it looks like and you can see all the different layers and how they are um, uh, brought together and those are the measurements that you can use or you can change them a little bit like I tend to change mine a little bit just based on what I'm creating that day the sizes of my images images so but this gives you a good starting point if you cut all your layers to this size then you can use those as your start okay let me hey I'm back all right, let's pop over to my other camera and let's have a look at the card that I made for today based on the card. So here it is. I decided to use some of this um, blue green paper in the plaid tidings designer series paper pack. Uh, it is actually on sale this week, which um, until just one more week until October 31st, 15% off. And there's so many different types of plaid in here. And they're not just Christmas plaids. They will be plaids that could work all year round. So this is a really good versatile pack. Uh, get it while you can. Stampin' Up! doesn't put things on sale all too often. So it's really nice when we do have a sale. So um, pick up a pack of the plaid tidings paper. 
Um, and then um, we're using the Little Treats bundle. I'm going to be using this on my Friday project as well, just a heads up. And I, I love this because it creates a box, but there's also things in here that we can use, like this label that we're going to use today. And um, it matches the Little Treat stamp set. And so they work really nicely together. And just remember bundles, when you buy a bundle versus the item separately, you can save 10%. Okay, let me move that out of the way. So let's talk a little bit about this card. I just stamped some gifts down up at the bottom here. I used one of the labels from that die set. And look at this embossing back here. Isn't this um, beautiful? That is the Dainty Diamonds embossing folder. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. I need to run and grab my stamp and cut emboss machine, but I'll show you how to do that in just one second. So let's start off with um, our base layer, uh, our focal point layer. And I'm gonna need to measure this. I don't have this all handy dandy. So this is a whisper weight piece. It measures four and a half by three and a quarters. So I wanted to make this um, card with different colors. So we're gonna experiment today. We're gonna bring this card together and we'll see how it looks. I don't know. I just picked a piece of plaid this morning and I thought I'd go a little bit more traditional Christmas colors. So um, we're gonna have to ch stamp the gifts in different colors this time. So I kind of had a look at what I was gonna do for the card base and I decided I'm gonna do just jade, shaded spruce and real red. So we'll see how that all comes together and I'm not 100% sure. So we'll, we'll just have to play with it. So why don't we start off, let's do, let's do shaded spruce as our center one. Okay, so you wanna find the center part of your card. Let me grab a pencil. So this is four and a half inches long. So I'm just gonna put a little mark at the two and a quarter inch point so that I can center my first one and then base all my other ones off of that. So let's start off and get this up in shaded spruce and we're gonna be maybe about a quarter of an inch. The edge of my stamp will be quarter of an inch but I think once it stamps it will be actually a little higher. So look at that. I just love how crisp this um, stamp stamps. Okay, I'm cleaning it off on my chamois off on the side. If you don't have a chamois already, I, I'm gonna just pull this. It's ugly, it looks ugly now. It was this beautiful kind of light lilac purple color beforehand, uh, but now it looks just like really yucky, but um, this cleans so awesomely. I just run it in the morning when I start my stamping for the day. I just run it underwater to reactivate it and I leave it open to dry so it doesn't mildew. Um, and this is just awesome for cleaning the ink off of everything. Definitely pick up one of those if you've never had um, one for cleaning your stamps. Okay, so we've got our first color down. And so let's um, add a different color. So let's do red next and I'm going to ink this up and I'm going to stamp it at the same level as this one but I'm going to go right off close to the side about an eighth of an inch from the edge like that and it doesn't matter if they're like the exact exact same height I'm going to clean this off again because it's so much easier to do these once you've got um, the outer ones done. So I'm gonna do real red on this side. So that means I'm gonna do just jade on the opposite side. I hope this looks good. It's an experiment. I did not pre do this card. Okay, I think I'm gonna like this. So now I'm gonna use just jade right here and just kind of lift it up just a little bit. Plant it right between the other two gifts. Okay, and then I'm cleaning off my stamp. Put my Just Jade away. 
and I'll come in with my railroad. So basically, I've just kind of taken some colors out of my paper. I don't think Just Jade was one of the original colors, though. But that's the color that I chose for my card base. Okay, so I like that. Kind of brings in a little bit of the colors of the plaid. And there's two shades of green in there. So I think that um, matches my plaid pretty good. Okay. So now I need to grab my embossing machine, which I left across the room. Let me grab that. Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to stamp my... I'm trying to decide. I'm going to cut first. Yes. I'll cut and then I'll, I'll stamp afterwards. I'm just with this tag right here. I'm, it was just trying to decide whether it's easier for me to line it up in the machine after I've stamped it or the other way around. And I think I found for this one, it's better to cut the tag first. So I'm going to do that. So let's go grab this. This is my base platform and I need my oh, next piece number two for my dies. Then I'm going to grab this little guy right here and let me see if I can find a piece of Whisper White. Okay, here's one. Put one cutting plate down. Put this down, one here. And then I'm just going to run this through. Easy peasy. And there's my little tag. I'll stamp that in a moment. And then while I'm still here and have the machine out, I want to also emboss that layer with the dainty diamonds embossing folder. And I think this is the first time, maybe not the first time, but um, this is a very light pattern, but it really comes out nicely with foil. So I've got a piece of gold foil sheet. This one measures five and a half by two inches. Actually, I cut it just under two inches because I'm gonna um, put it right in between two lines. There's, there's almost like a slight line on this pattern. And what I wanna do is get it in between those lines because if they are right on the edge, there's kind of like a little raised lip on the edge when you do that and I'd prefer that not to kind of stand out. So for this one we need to get rid of plate number two and go right down on the base platform. Use one of my cutting plates then the die with the not the die the folder with the piece of cardstock inside and then the second layer and I'm just going to run this through Oh, you know what? This embossing folder, I, I'm, it's the wrong kind. It's the thick kind, so I told you wrong. Need to get rid of both of these. See, when I was doing that, I kind of felt like it was wrong. It was didn't feel like it was going through well. That's when you need to stop and think, oh my gosh, that's the wrong, the wrong sandwich. This is the plate that we need for our thicker embossing folders. For our thinner ones, we would use the number one and then the two clear plates. But for the thicker embossing folders, we need number one plate and number four plate. It tells us right here, right on here. I just forgot that this was a thicker one. So number one, the embossing folder with the foil in here and number four plate and now we'll run it through and now it feels right before it was like oh it doesn't quite feel right so that's when you always need to double check your sandwich and make sure it's correct okay let's see how this is going to look let us see oh look at that isn't that pretty it's a very light pattern it doesn't bump up too much but it looks like tin it's just gorgeous. All right, 
let me put this aside. And we're starting to build all the layers of this piece. And now we have this little piece we need to stamp on. And there's my little ho, 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 Merry Christmas. And I think I'm going to use the darkest green for that, the shaded spruce. So I'm going to just ink this up. And I want to make sure this is somewhat centered. And here's a little trick. If you're stamping afterwards, this little um, greeting would actually fit on a B block. Let me remove this. I'm gonna get uh, my ink ink on my fingers here. But what happens if I put it on a B block and I try and stamp it on this layer, it's really hard to see because these edges are bubbled. It's really hard to see where you're placing your stamp on your uh, piece of cardstock. So if you just go up one block size, this is a C block. Um, it's just a little bit easier to see because you can see a little bit better the placement because the beveled edge is a little bit further out. Okay, and I've got green ink on my thumb. I've got a, a green thumb. <laughs> Not the kind that I need for the garden though. All right, let me close this up so I don't have any other green fingers. And let's bring this in. Let's hope this card looks okay. So I decided to go with a Just Jade card base. And so let's um, adhere everything together. I'm trying to decide. I can put this layer down first, I think. And then put all the other layers. It really doesn't matter whether you put this layer or this layer. But I'm going to do this one first. So for my Just Jade card base, let's just talk about that real quick. It's eight and a half by five and a half and scored in half at four and a quarter. So that becomes the fold. And then I'm just going to add a gold foil piece. And my tumble's a little bit slow this morning. It was like me getting out of bed this morning. It's so dark here right now in the morning. Uh, when the time changes over, it's not going to be as dark in the morning. I, I find it's really easy for me to get out, up when it's light out, but not so easy when it's dark out. So right now it's so dark in the morning when we get up. Uh, we like to walk really early. Okay, so this piece, just center it on your card. Sometimes it's easier to center a long skinny piece to see if it's centered if you do it on this side. Because then you can judge the distance on either side a little better. Okay. So now we're going to do this piece. Look at this color of plaid. This would be a really nice fall card, but I... I don't know, it's not really colors that I would typically ascribe to uh, Christmas. So I just decided that I needed to use this Christmassy side of the paper, traditional Christmas colors, since I did my other card in non-traditional colors. Okay. So push this down. Okay, I probably need to mention what the measurements of this layer are. The plaid layer was four inches by three and three quarter inches. All right, we are building this card. Okay, it's not gonna look too bad <laughs> this morning. Oh my gosh. I was trying to like, you know, pick colors. And I started off with um, soft sea foam and I didn't really like it. Then I tried Whisper White and I didn't really like it either. It was too white. So then I was like, okay, what other light color green do I have that's not too bright? And then I was like, oh, I could use try Just Jade. So I think Just Jade um, is, is a good color for here. So we're gonna add this, but we're also gonna add a bow, which I tied earlier. 
Um, this is in Just Jade, Just Jade and Just Jade. So it looks kind of nice together. So you just want to make sure you leave enough room for your bow. So just kind of have a, a eyeball here before you glue down your greeting. And so we just kind of want to have it about here. Make sure it's straight somewhat. Okay. And then I'm going to grab a mini glue dot and my bow. Stick it right on there. Lift it up. And then stick it down on there. What do you think? Not too bad for a card with colors I threw together this morning. <laughs> um, you can do this really for any of the plaids. So, um, you know, just look through here and see what you can find for colors within your plaid. You know, here I see peacock. I see maybe a dark purple. Um, you could do... Um, Oh, you know, Blackberry Bliss. And you could do like maybe a green, a blue, and a the Blackberry Bliss. You could add in an orange or a yellow as well. But you can take each one of these papers and pick out colors from them to create your cards with. So that's kind of the fun thing about trying to figure out which one do you like better, the blue one or the green one that I uh, threw together uh, today? Um, they're both kind of different. This one's got more color variation in it with the, the red and the green, and this one's kind of blue-green. Blue and green are closer together, so they kind of have more of a monochrome monochromatic feel, even though blues and greens aren't. They're different colors, but... Um, uh, and this one, I think, just kind of matches the plaid. And I like the gold on this one because it, there's a little bit of a gold um, stripe in here. So it kind of makes sense that you bring the gold in from here. And the blue greens are more um, are more closely related to the silvers. So let me know which one you like best. And I'm going to come back around here. And oh, my hair sticking up when I lean over my card it kind of goes kind of goes a little wild okay all right good morning everyone good morning Karen and Janine we've got Karen's in New Jersey and Janine's in Indiana and it's dark dark in Indiana yeah it's it's kind of dark here this morning oh and Geraldine's here from North Carolina hi Geraldine glad you could make a live for once that's great um, and Amy is in Washington and she has snow on the ground. I know last week you told us it was snowing and now it's actually kind of just stayed there. That's crazy. Um, Betty, good morning from Oregon. That's neat. We have like a whole bunch of states represented this morning. Good morning, Mary. Um, and thank you for sharing, Betty. Good morning, Jeanne. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Karen says she loves the inspiration I get from your sketches. Well, thank you. You know what? Amy, who's on here, is the one who actually creates the sketches um, for us. So thank you, Amy. She does all the hard work of the sketches because we all have to, um, we have a whole group of bloggers behind us. Um, so we have Lori on our group and she does um, all the member um, uh, requests. She handles all of them and welcomes everyone to the group. Um, I kind of coordinate everything. Um, uh, a, a downline of my, my team member, Catalina and I, we started um, Casing Tuesday many years ago. And so um, I've kind of continued on. Catalina passed away this year, sadly. Um, and um, so I've carried on so I, I kind of coordinate everything, but I have helpers because it's so much more fun to do things together, right? So, um, but I have to give uh, credit to the sketches for Amy. So, um, 
All right. Um, let's see. And good morning, D. You're here from Kansas City. Um, oh, the video froze up in your area. I'm sorry. I hope it didn't um, freeze up for everyone. Um, that's the hard thing about lives, right? You have to, I'm streaming through Facebook. I'm actually plugged directly into my modem. There's a long cord that goes across my house to my modem, which is uh, in the next room on the other wall in the next room. But I plug myself directly into the modem. So I hope I get a clear signal as possible. Um, D said, great tip about the block sizing. Yeah, it, it is really, really helpful if you have something and you're trying to center it and you can't see your edges just try a different block sometimes that really helps or you can do use the stamparatus i don't use the stamparatus a lot on my videos because um i like to get the stamparatus set up when i'm making a lot of cards like maybe 50 cards at one time and then it's so easy to stamp them and place them but if i'm making like two or three cards um for me personally, I don't need the Stamparatus because I'm uh, at this point, this many years in, I've been stamping, I think about 18 years. Um, I've been had the practice so that normally I can get it right. But the Stamparatus is huge for me um, if I'm stamping a lot of cards because then it is actually faster because you set it up and then you can just keep going and um, I need to bring my Stamparatus out and, and do that a little bit more often because I forget about that aspect of it when I'm just stamping one card. Okay. Um, Dee says the plaid and gold are really good together. And the colors you chose go together very well. Thank you. Mary says she likes the blue. Jian likes both. Janine likes the blue. Betty also likes um, both. Um, my favorite colors are blue and plaid, but I think they're both pretty for different people. Blue may be more subtle, whereas the green and plaid seem to scream more traditional card. Yeah, yeah, traditional, the red and green. Good morning, Beverly from Quebec. You are just north of us in Massachusetts. Um, Uh, Jeanne said something about that's because you're a professional and I'm not sure what you're referring to. I'm sorry, I must have lost the thread, but um, I am so glad that all of you have joined me this morning. Just remember, if you want any of the supplies that I talked about or want to take a closer look at them, just uh, click on over to my blog. The link is down below in the description of this video. You might need to click on see more um, to see my full description. And once you click on that, you will see a supply list down at the bottom of my uh, blog. And then the other thing is, um, if you want to purchase something from me, I reward my customers with free tutorials. My tutorial of the month is um, the Peaceful Nativity Box. You don't have to choose this one, um, but I have over 70 tutorials um, to choose from. But this is the one that I came up with this month. It is a tea light holder and a gift box. So. Um, you can find out more information about that on my blog. Your order just needs to be at least $15. So that is like a really a small amount. And um, then you can earn this for free instead of having to purchase the tutorial. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I already told you you can join our Facebook group Casing Tuesday by clicking down below. Um, and then, oh, on Friday, I will be over on YouTube with a live video at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are interested in um, uh, seeing that video live, make sure when you uh, click over to my blog, click on the videos uh, menu item up at the top, and that will take you over to my YouTube channel, and you can subscribe there. And if you click on the bell, you can also get notifications of when I go live. I try to be pretty consistent. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is generally my time, unless there's a problem, which, you know, life happens. There's not always um, uh, perfection in timing. But generally, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is the time that I will go live on Fridays. 
advice. Um, but if you get notifications, that will also help you. Um, it will notify you once I go live. All right. Um, Oh, Jeanne, okay, you, um, Jeanne now explains her, her comment. And now I understand because what I was talking about is um, she said that I was a professional and that's why I could stamp uh, straight. And uh, yeah, I guess after a while, like you do kind of have that, you know, um, that level of competence that you can do that. Thank you. That's really sweet. And um uh, uh, GN says she can't uh, get things straight. Well, you know what? Some people will never be able to do it because it, it's their brains work differently. And that's why we have great tools like the Stamparatus um, to help us. Or it could be just a time thing. You know, it's, it's whatever you put time into, you will get better at. Um, like skill wise, that has been the story of my life. You, if you went back in my life and you saw how I started crafting when I was a little girl, um, and I was in, um, in Canada, I was in brownies and girl guides and, uh, we didn't do a lot of crafts at home. And so my skill level wasn't very good. And a lot of the other girls did do crafts at home and their skill level was so much better than mine. And sometimes I felt really kind of down um, because I wanted to be better. And um, I kind of shoved art to the side of my life, like because I really felt like I was not really good at it. And I just said, you know what? Um, I'll do other things in life. And, um, but I was introduced to stamping um, when my son was little. And I just instantly fell in love with this form of art. And after a while, I realized that now with um, my adult body, I was much more skilled at things. And as time went on, I could get better at doing things. And suddenly I found that, wow, Maybe it was just that I hadn't practiced before. I hadn't had enough exposure before. And so this is like a really strange thing for me in a sense because I didn't have an art background. I, I didn't think I was good at art. And now coming into this, this hobby, um, it is an art form and it's awesome. And when I see that in myself, I know that there are other people out there that maybe just haven't practiced, don't have the confidence level yet. So, you know, I'm like 18 years in. So, you know, it's whatever you put time into. And I'm sure there are things in your life that you are way better at than me just because you've spent time with it. And um, so I hope that's encouraging to anyone out there that takes up a hobby. Don't don't judge your your first experience uh, if something is is crooked um, it's not stamped a hundred percent you need to give yourself a little bit of time to get into it and just the sheer time that you devote to something will will get you better right all right I'm like on my little soapbox this morning our time well I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you on Friday on my YouTube channel um, so I will see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.